comes the Duplo train. It tries to bridge in vain. Somebody out! Yes! Yeah. That's what they shout. Duplo train, it's off again. And the people sing the people. We love this funny game. Duplo train, yeah! Hello all, James Stephanie Sterling here. Today we're going to have a pop at all your favourites, Bobby Kotick, CD Projekt Red, all your favourites, Andrew Wilson's a bit of a dickhead isn't he? <laughs> yeah alright, sorry before we crack on I've got to make the dog fart and burp. I'd say that went on entirely too long. A lot of people lately have shown me the news that Bobby Kotick, billionaire, is halving his salary at Activision Blizzard. This 50% pay cut mirrors that of legendary and late Nintendo CEO Satoru Iwata, who slashed his own pay on more than one occasion to make up for failures such as the Wii U sales performance. This, on paper, is a good thing. Less money going to a man so rich neither he nor his family will ever need money again is just good economic sense. Despite how many alleged economic experts seem to think hoarded generational wealth is somehow good for us all. It should be noted immediately and sternly however that Bobby Kotick cutting his pay doesn't actually mean all that much. First and foremost, this ain't the same situation as Iwata. Kotick isn't cutting his pay so that workers will keep their jobs and morale at the company will stay high. If Kotick's motivation were the same as Iwata's, his company wouldn't engage in regular layoffs after periods of unease and uncertainty among workers who are perpetually fearing for their job security. But that's something Activision does as standard. No, it seems more like the pay cut was for optics than anything else, considering Kotick's ridiculously high salary has been criticised by investment groups and saw him listed among the nation's most ridiculously overpaid CEOs alongside Electronic Arts' Andrew Wilson. What's more, the billionaire weirdo is still taking an absurd amount of money home, just not so much that he's 300 times more compensated than the average Activision employee. Halving his pay by $800 $175,000 means he still takes an absurdly unnecessary $875,000 home just as a base salary, far in excess of anybody doing any hard work at his company. And that is just the base. The real news here, the lead that most stories on this have buried is that Kotick, a billionaire, is still able to make up to 200% his base salary in bonuses. And this comes after Bobby Kotick tried to get himself $200 million after laying off a bunch of staff, seemingly for no other reason than to make his little boner twitch. Or cocaine. They may have given it to him for cocaine. I have a theory most of the money in video games goes towards cocaine. This is based on the fact that game executives take so much money even though they don't need it, so they've got to be spending it on something. Now what I've said isn't based on any evidence, but it's about as credible a theory as the idea that billionaires are morally acceptable. Talk to your child about drugs. Meanwhile, over at CD Projekt Red, executives are proving that capitalism is all about rewarding a handful of already wealthy individuals whether they succeed or fail. You see, once you reach a level of wealth, you become pretty much immune to consequence, and that's been demonstrated perfectly by the sheer volume of money CDPR's board members awarded themselves off the back of a rushed, broken, dishonestly sold game. 
Cyberpunk, despite being sold on more lies than an Ubisoft title and literally giving customers seizures, was always going to make a fuck ton of money. Hell, Ubisoft itself is literally the Vatican of video games and still accrued obscene levels of revenue even while it was facing accusations of years and years of systematically approved abuse. Abuse it still hasn't answered for, but the press still review their games. The mainstream video game industry simply doesn't feel direct financial consequences for its behaviour, so the fact Cyberpunk 2077 was going to make a fortune was never in question. In short, the gamers TM will always reward bad behaviour. They don't care enough about anything other than entertainment to enact any. This is, by the way, why companies like Electronic Arts and Activision think they can get away with their bullshit in the first place. Because everyone will literally fucking let them. Five individuals have taken a huge chunk of that cyberpunk money and stuffed it entirely into their own pockets. After literally lying about the product, selling unfinished and broken goods, and generally showing their asses at any given opportunity, the board members of CD Projekt Red still get to walk away with millions upon millions of dollars. Studio heads Marcin Iwinski and Adam Kaczynski are both set to receive $6.3 million each, while Adam Badowski takes home $4.2 million in juicy bonuses. Now, in the interests of fairness, bonuses do extend to the rest of CDPR staff, though obviously they get mere table scraps compared to the privileged few at the very top. To put this absurdly skewed balance into proportion, journalist Jason Scryer reports that of the bonus money available, $29.8 million was distributed across 865 employees, while a further $28 million was split between just five people on CDPR's board. Just five. Shocking, isn't it? I know a lot of people have responded to this news with outrage and shock, but would it blow your mind to learn that this is quote-unquote normal for business? This shit is happening all of the time, everywhere. While they're telling us there's no money to go around, while they're telling us they have to cut corners and save and lose jobs and make worse products, that's where the money's going. It's going far away from anything fucking useful. So yeah, over 800 people got roughly the same amount of money as five people who did far less work on the game that made the money. In fact, what leadership mostly seemed to do in the case of Cyberpunk was lie to both workers and customers, abuse the former, scam the latter, utterly undermine the game itself with a PR fiasco, and then they all helped themselves to massive fucking bonuses at the end. This is what mismanagement and poor leadership in the game industry gets you. It's an industry that gleefully rewards failing upwards, or rather, it rewards regardless of success success or failure. It also punishes regardless of such things. After all, whenever Activision jettisons hundreds of workers, the company nonetheless boasts of record revenue, increased earnings, the company going from strength to fucking strength. Rather than reward workers for their effort, companies reward themselves with layoffs to increase their value and tell the shareholders they saved even more money. Anything to further the mileage of the illusion of perpetual infinite growth. For years and years, corporate mouthpieces and their propagandist press parrots have pushed the myth that video games are too expensive to make, alleging, without citation, that customers demanded massive open worlds and hardware-melting graphics, and claiming that such demands are too costly to meet without the need for manipulative microtransaction economies, loot boxes sold to children, and endless scads of DLC and advertising and special editions and merch and monster energy promotions. This has always been complete fucking bullshit, especially when you see the billions upon billions of excessive money flowing into the industry, but nowhere has the lie been more exposed than in the paychecks of the executive class. This is all just about video games. Nobody should be able to look at Kotick halving his pay while still taking home tens of millions of dollars and tell me with a straight face there's not enough money to go around. Nobody should be able to look at five execs taking 875 people's worth of bonuses and tell me 
with a straight face that games are too expensive to make. Apparently, these huge, visually blistering open world games make enough money that five people can suck almost $30 million out of the company without consequence. They make enough money that Bobby Kotick can just magically give himself $200 million, and he gladly does so while merrily laying off hundreds of workers who collectively didn't take anywhere near the amount of money he does as one man. There's not enough money to just make and sell a video game on its own, but there's enough for a wealthy elite class to help themselves too in the form of constant incessant bonuses? The fact this never ever gets brought up in wider discussions of budgets, revenue and game development is fucking pathetic and an indictment on video game industry discourse and the people who allegedly lead it. Simply accepting an executive job at Activision gives you a whopping financial bonus. Yes, if you are accepting a high-ranking and therefore high-paying job at Activision Blizzard, you are immediately rewarded for it with millions of dollars for doing nothing. The company also engages in a legal form of insider trading, manipulating the stock market by announcing buyback programs in their company. A buyback announcement demonstrates the strength and success of a company and therefore raises the company's value. This basically just lets executives sell their stock for more than they would have before the buyback announcement. This has allowed Activision officials to sell over $430 million worth of stock in one week. Including Bobby Kotick, who sold almost 4 million of his own shares and made $180.8 million a day after Activision's buyback announcement in 2017. How is Activision not a scam? Like, if you look, if you dig into what Activision does over the years, what it's done with its money, where it goes, and how that company makes money, the whole thing looks like a front. Now, I am not going to outright accuse Activision of being a full-on con, but it looks like it. Activision looks like it's up to seedy sh I mean, this is just the stuff that's public. This is just the stuff that Activision isn't ashamed of. I mean, I'm just saying I dread to think who's in Bobby Kotick's Rolodex. The battery compartment is its anus. A particularly squeezy anus from the looks of it. Right. It's reported that while the executive class gets to throw money around like snowballs, the lowest paid in the company can't afford to eat in the company cafeteria and find themselves struggling to pay rent. Bobby Kotick sees nothing wrong with this. Executives in general see nothing wrong with this. In fact, far too many people see nothing wrong with this because it's been sickeningly normalised. We just take it as normal, as read, for granted that CEOs and similar executives get lots of money. We don't ask why. We don't question it because it's always been this way. It'd be like asking why the sky is blue. It just always has been and always will be and its normalcy is beyond debate. The planet's atmosphere scatters sunlight. Blue light scatters more than other colors due to the shape of its waves and our eyes pick up the blue. At least that's what the NASA website for children tells me. The point is, there is a reason for the sky to be blue. There is a reason the grass is green and ducks go quack, and there is a reason executives take home massive bonuses. It's all just so mundane and part of ordinary life that very few of us care about the answers. But it's a fucking good question. Why did Bobby Kotick get to give himself $200 million? What did five people at CD Projekt Red do to earn almost $30 million? Hmm? What? And the reason executives take home millions of dollars in bonuses on top of the millions of dollars they already get is far less scientific than the sky being blue. It's because they can. Because capitalism rewards those with no shame and fewer scruples who are happy to be rewarded regardless of success or failure, while being quick to point at everyone else's failings as the reason why they're not also mega wealthy. Simply put, there is no justification for Bobby Kotick even taking home the cut version of his pay. Taking home almost a million dollars as a base pay plus ridiculous benefits is unjustifiable. But he can do it. And so he did.
he takes some more money out of that company at any given opportunity. To the point where an investment group suggested that all Activision exists for is to make its executives wealthy. And that's really what all these major game publishers exist for. They're not here for you, or the workers, or the games they produce. Many executives come to games from outside the industry, and will leave it for outside industries as well. Most of them don't give a rat's fuck about what is being sold. They could work for Nintendo or Burger King for all they care. All that matters is they get their millions upon millions for doing comparatively fuck all, compared to the workers on the ground who are actually making the products that make the money. What I'm saying, folks, is that y'all need to seize the means of development. I'm not suggesting running game publishers cooperatively is the answer to all our problems, but it answers the problems of Bobby Kotick not getting a real fucking job. And isn't that what we want at the end of the day? For the overpaid and overprivileged likes of Bobby Kotick, Andrew Wilson and CDPR's board members to go out and get proper fucking work? Maybe they could work for a game publisher. Actually fucking work for one? Don't get me wrong, I'm usually fully against the idea that anything outside of 9 to 5 labour is somehow not a proper job, but I'm also fully against a handful of rich men giving themselves company money for no other reason than to have it. That's not a job, that's being a giant fetus growing bulbous as it sucks on the fiscal umbilical cord of capitalism's womb. Personally, I would say no to the puppy baby. Let's not forget that this money goes offshore as well. Activision is a company known to exploit tax havens so that it pays nothing, and none of these savings go back into game development, or the pockets of the actual workers themselves. No, that money just gets sucked up. That's all that happens. A few parasites suck it up and we never see that money again. Because it's sat on, hoarded, accumulated by people who never need it, will never need it, won't spend it, but simply want it so no one else can have it. These are the fucking monsters running the game industry, and amazingly they've convinced everybody that there's no money in game development. The budgets are so tight and the rewards just aren't there without tons of fucking abuse backing these game releases up. And it's garbage. It's complete fucking garbage. And every time you make an excuse for a company like Activision, Bobby Kotick laughs the fuck at you while helping himself to another tax-free couple of mil. We do not need these people. We do not need a man like Bobby Kotick. Get rid of the executive class. They only exist to take money. Money that could be used on the things that people tell me this money gets used on. Not to fill up tax havens, but to actually make these expensive ass video games. Oh, and Activision has put every studio it has on Call of Duty now. <laughs> what Bobby Kotick could stand to do is take that halved pay and then halve it again, and then halve it again, and then halve it again, and halve it again, and then take the pay cut. Then you could probably stand to Harvard a couple more times. He's a billionaire. He has won. He won capitalism, a, you know, several hundred million dollars ago. He's fine. His family is fine. It was fine a couple hundred million dollars ago. What he's doing now is slam dunk after slam dunk when there's 10 seconds left to go on the clock, the opposing team are puppies, and he's got flubber on. It's gotta be drugs. It can't just be a competition, can it? Between billionaires to see who can get richer. It can't just be that. They can't just be having money just for the sake of it. There's gotta be a point. There's gotta be. Hasn't there? <laughs> that fucking dog. Thank dog for me.